Alright guys, I'm here with my WWE Monday Night Raw review for July 9th, 2012. And I wanted to start by uh, a little bit of news. I heard that Pac from Dragon Gate USA was signed by WWE. That's great news for Pac. He's an awesome wrestler. I kind of thought he would be signed by TNA before anybody knew which company picked him up because they are big in the UK and he could be a great babyface. But WWE has him. And that's great. The only problem is they also have guys like Moxley, uh, Hero, Claudio they haven't even really used yet. Um, just uh, Rollins or Tyler Black. They have these guys and they haven't even started using them yet and they're still signing guys like Pac to the roster. I mean, hopefully they start to use these guys in the future. And I also heard they picked up Sarah Del Rey, which is awesome news for her. She is a fantastic female wrestler. Not really, doesn't really have the look of the Kelly Kelly girls, but she's a great wrestler. I'm surprised WWE even picked her up after all these years, but who knows? It's great for her. She can finally get some money. I mean, she's been wrestling for like 10 years now, so, or longer, and she definitely deserves it. So I thought that was some cool news there. And as far as this go home show goes for Money in the Bank, there was some stuff on here that was just made no sense just completely out there but the positive thing I have to say about this show is no matter how ridiculous this AJ, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan stuff gets it feels like the main event and that is a huge step up from what's been going on in WWE I know Cena's a bigger draw than Punk He his storylines are the main event but for Money in the Bank I think the world title match or the WWE title match is actually going to be the main event and that's a good thing uh, I think the money in the bank matches are going to go before it and it's going to finish up with Punk versus Brian with AJ as the ref and the show opens up with AJ coming out and they have they build this up the entire night just like they have been on the past Raws uh, she says that she brings Punk out to the ring first of all and she tells Punk that she doesn't need help she's fine mentally says no one's ever cared about her before uh, she says a bunch of other bullshit that lasted too long and she proposes to him uh, yeah this this is just craziness uh, she proposes to CM Punk she gets down on one knee I was hoping he'd hit her with a shining wizard but he didn't um, and then it shows Punk I don't know if he was supposed to be looking off confused or looking off considering this so yeah, it was very strange. Daniel Bryan comes out, he's chanting no. Bryan says Punk is playing her, and that Bryan actually has feelings for her. He tells Punk that if he really cared about AJ, say I do. And then Bryan proposes to AJ. Uh, Punk asks where the ring is, and Bryan says it's in the back. It's in the back. I thought that was great. Uh, then the Raw Anonymous General Manager beeps in. Cole can't get the damn podium uncovered with the black thing that covers it. That was funny. And I was just thinking, okay, maybe there's going to be a big surprise later. Maybe the real general manager is going to come out. No. This was just a lame-ass waste of a general manager spot here. Uh, general manager puts Punk and AJ in a match against Eve and Daniel Bryan. AJ says she was surprised, but everything happens for a reason. She will leave the arena with her future husband. Then we get Sheamus versus Jack Swagger, the first of many short matches tonight. Sheamus wins with a brogue kick. Del Rio comes on the Titantron backstage, says he's going to take the title Sunday. So Sheamus brogue kicks Swagger again. Sheamus is just a bully. Then we get Ryder and Santino backstage talking about uh, Ryder being general manager of SmackDown. Santino says he's going to find the anonymous general manager with his Sherlock Holmes kit. This is the same exact thing R-Truth did when they were in England. Um, very lame. And it only got worse. Uh, they announced that The Rock's going to be at the 1000th episode. Uh, we get a tag match with absolutely no entrances for any of the guys. It was Lord Tenside and Dolph Ziggler versus Tyson Kidd and Christian. Vicky Guerrero's on commentary, uh, which was completely pointless. It was just an excuse for Jerry Lawler to make another few jabs at her about her weight. And the match was so short, it was very short, so it made no sense to even bring Vicky out there. 
Uh, Sakamoto distracts the ref. Ziggler holds Christian's leg. Tensai splashes him and hits the senton for the win. That was pretty much it. Afterwards, Tensai beats up, uh, beats up Tyson Kidd, power bombs him on the apron ROH style. Michael Cole puts it over, says that's the hardest part of the ring. Same thing they do in Ring of Honor. And that was it, really. Uh, then we get Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler arguing about general managers. Cole splashes water on Jerry. Uh, the general manager buzzes in. Cole refuses to read it. Lawler reads it, and it says that Lawler versus Cole tonight, uh, but it's up to the WWE Universe. Just a cheap way to try and get people to go to the website. That's all it was. And it was stupid. Then we get Brodus Clay versus Drew McIntyre. Drew says it's the same song and dance every week. Very true. Uh, Brodus headbutts him and hits the splash for the win. Another very, very short match here. Santino asks Jericho if he's the general manager. He asks if Santino is the general manager. Big Show comes up to talk to Jericho. Show tells him to stay out of his way. They play the 1,000th Raw moment for tonight, and it's Stephanie McMahon talking about uh, Triple H and how she told him she was pregnant, but not really. And then we get John Cena. He comes out. He puts over money in the bank, uh, promises to stop Big Show and win the briefcase. And then we get John Cena and Kane versus Big Show and Chris Jericho. So Kane is teaming with John Cena now. It doesn't get much more babyface than that. I mean... That's pretty much official. Kane is a babyface. Uh, <clears throat> Cena pins Jericho after the attitude adjustment, but Big Show pulls him out of the ring. The referee rings the bell. Uh, Big Show brings out two ladders and runs into Jericho and Kane. He sandwiches Jericho in between the ladders, and Cena comes in with the ladder, pushes Big Show out. Um, this actually made me think for a second that because John Cena looked strong here and he already got rid of Big Show, that he may actually lose at Money in the Bank. Um, it's a stretch. I sadly have to say that if I was predicting what would happen right now, I would go with John Cena winning Money in the Bank, but the way this ended tonight gave me a glimmer of hope, just a tiny bit, that John Cena might actually lose Money in the Bank. So... I thought that was fine. Backstage Eve wishes Punk good luck with the AJ situation. She says that if AJ doesn't hear I do tonight, then she could cost him the title Sunday. She says Punk's been overshadowed by The Rock, Cena, Triple H, Big Show, Lesnar, and now AJ. Which is true. Uh, backstage Santino asks the great Kali if he is the general manager. Kali is very confused. This was the best... Santino Sherlock Holmes segment of the night. I like this. Uh, we get a Money in the Bank qualifier with Sin Cara versus Heath Slater. Crowd is completely dead for this. Uh, Sin Cara wins with the La Mystica Slam. And at first I was getting nervous. Um, I was thinking maybe we're not going to get a legend tonight. But thankfully Heath Slater cuts a promo. Says he will beat any former champion. Bring him out. Doesn't matter who they are. Bob Backlund comes out. Uh, not the most exciting guy, but I thought he did an okay job out here tonight. He comes out with no knee pad, no pads at all. Um, he does that weird strut, and he puts Slater in the crossface chicken wing. Uh, it wasn't a match. There was no ref. He just tortures the guy and then leaves. And I thought it was fine. Um, I'm expecting bigger legends. I mean, Vader, Sid, it's been awesome. Uh, DDP, so we got, what, two weeks now before the 1,000th episode, or the 1,000th episode is in two weeks, so we got one more show, hopefully it's another big name. I know they're saving a lot of guys like uh, Bret Hart, um, <clears throat> The Rock, Lesnar, uh, DX, they're saving a lot of that for the 1,000th episode, but I'm still hoping for a big surprise next week. Uh, they announced that Kofi and Truth versus Hunico and Camacho for the YouTube pre-show for Money in the Bank. Uh, so 75% of the fans voted yes to Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole. I hope they got what they wanted because this was shit. This entire thing was horrible. Uh, so everybody who voted for that, did it live up to your expectations? Were you satisfied with this match? Um... Booker and Matthews call the match. Cole tries to escape. Booker throws him back in. 
Jerry Lawler picks him up for an airplane spin, pins him, and wins. Uh, the general manager <clears throat> buzzes in, and he says that due to Booker T interfering, Michael Cole is the winner. He reverses the decision. So Santino comes out, says the general manager has to be under the ring. That's the only place he could be. And he walks by the ring. Uh, there's some lame-ass comedy with the general manager buzzing in saying, No, I'm not. And it just was very predictable. It's Hornswoggle. He pulls Santino under. Um, Hornswoggle's not supposed to be a heel, but apparently he's been the anonymous general manager this entire time. Very, very bad payoff. Uh, Jerry Lawler says, I ought to bend you over and spank you. And Hornswoggle runs around kicking shins and biting asses. That's it. Uh, very bizarre and bad. Uh, this segment was pretty horrible, actually. Um, I've said before many times in these videos that I don't mind the lame comedy. I don't mind the goofiness, the cheesiness stuff, as long as it's funny. And this just isn't funny. It's stupid. And I feel like I've seen it a million times already. So then we get the main event. Eve and Daniel Bryan versus AJ and Punk. Eve goes to tag Bryan. He jumps off the apron, so AJ rolls up Eve for the win. Brian says that he did this to prove to AJ he cares more about her. Ask her to go get married with him. Punk says that Brian just cares about the title. Punk says, I'm not going to marry you, AJ. Um, I care enough about you to tell you the truth. She slaps him. Daniel Bryan laughs and tells her to come home. And then she slaps him and does the yes chance. That was it. Uh, I mean, it's the, the positive stuff here is I don't care too much about this storyline because it's just getting dumber every week with her proposing and it's just stupid but I do like the fact that WWE is putting focus on it and making it look important because it does involve the title so that's a positive I know it doesn't really sound like one but to me that is a positive now the negative side of tonight was, of course, the lamb comedy. The matches were very short. Um, the two tag matches, I think, were the longest, and Sin Cara versus Heath Slater. Uh, that was it, really. And, I mean, it was an... I would have to put this show below average, in my opinion. Uh, especially if you take into consideration this is a go-home show, and this is supposed to make you want to buy the pay-per-view. Um did not do its job for me at all. I've been hoping that Rey Mysterio comes back, maybe The Miz, uh, gets added to the Raw Money in the Bank, and it's not going to happen. This is it. These four guys. I don't care about this match at all. Um, I care the most about Brian versus Punk because I want Brian to finally get a run with the title. Uh, SmackDown Money in the Bank now has Sin Cara. If Wade Barrett was going to return, it probably would have been tonight. And he didn't. So I'm hoping Ziggler wins <clears throat> Money in the Bank. But uh, I really expected Wade Barrett to return. I kept hearing all these rumors that at WrestleMania, the reason they canceled it was because Wade Barrett got injured and they were bringing back the pay-per-view just for him so he could actually win it. Had a lot of things planned for him. He's ready to come back, I hear. And he didn't. So I'm really hoping that Ziggler wins, but I was very disappointed we didn't get Wade Barrett returning. Uh, I know that there's still SmackDown, but let's be honest, if he was going to come back and be announced for the pay-per-view and make a big deal out of it, it would have been tonight on Raw. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, really. I was just kind of disappointed, and I'm sure SmackDown Money in the Bank is going to be a good match with guys like Tyson Kidd in there and stuff, but... Uh, the show right now, I think if four matches announced, is it's not looking good. So I know Brian and Punk will deliver SmackDown Money in the Bank, but you can't carry a three-hour-long pay-per-view and ask people to pay 45 bucks for four matches. I mean, you're the biggest wrestling company in the world. It just it doesn't make any sense to me. So, yeah, I was kind of disappointed with this show overall. But uh, that's it, guys. That's my review of this week's Monday Night Raw. I hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this show in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.